It's Off Air with Julie Stewart Banks on the Bet Rivers Network. Welcome, kitties, to Off Air on Bet Rivers, the show that begins when the red light goes off, which technically doesn't make any sense. But you know what I mean. It's conversations that are loose, potentially fun, and hopefully interesting with some of the coolest people in sports and entertainment finding out more about who they are off air. I'm Julie Stewart Banks, and I'm psyched to sit down with today's guest in person for an interview. I seriously cannot believe she's here in the flesh. She is doing me a solid, and I can die happy on episode two, which this is. I'm pleased to welcome in sports broadcaster, comedian, having worked at FS1, ESPN, Apple TV, NBC, and more. She's maybe worked for as many networks as me, but is much more successful. And she has been hosting the 91st Minute with U.S. Women's National Team player. Midge Purse for Just Women Sports. Welcome on in, Katie Nolan. Thank you for being here. Julie, that's the nicest intro. You gotta, you, we've worked a lot of places. Yeah, we've just been we've collecting jobs. collecting jobs like Pokemon yeah. cards. That's sort of what I think of it yeah, as. Yeah, gotta catch them all. Okay, so um, you're working right now mm. with, and I'm curious, Kay, so I'm really sorry for your loss. Oh, I was like, what? But yeah, thanks. Yeah, for the U.S. Women's National Team. Yeah, thanks. Katie's been hosting a show with Midge Purse. Mm -hmm. Where we talk about, ideally, the uh, U.S. in the World Cup. So is it, is it over now? The show? No, we have to keep talking about the World Cup. I asked. I was like, so are we good? <laughs> You're like, so the World Cup's over so now? So we're done? Uh, but they were like, no, we're going to. And look, the women's game is growing. You know this. Also, thoughts and prayers to you as well, because Canada you know, it was a, it was a, it's, it's, it's a weird world cup. It's a weird it's world cup. It's a necessary loss. Exactly. All of ours, all of our losses, I think Canada, cause Canada's like a dog that like they didn't feed and they just hoped <laughs> would like win best in show or something. Mm -hmm. I love starting an analogy and having absolutely no idea where it's going. That's, I think it went where it needed to. Yeah. Honestly. So that's Canada, but USA, that was a tough loss. Yeah, it's, it's rough. Where are you in your stages of grief? Um, well, so the day that it happened, uh, I actually went and saw Oppenheimer that day, oh. and it felt like a fitting, <laughs> uh, you know, I had those plans beforehand, thought I was going to have seen a win and then go. I didn't, and it sort of fit. I had like a depressed day. Yeah. Um, and now I'm at the stage, which I think is called cope, yeah. where you're like, look, this has to happen. If you want the women's game to grow, then you have to want countries that haven't won it to win it so that it doesn't just become the United States show. And so it's time for other nations to shine. And I'm happy for them all. And I lift them up in love. It's weird that it's not the US show, right? Yeah, it is. It's also, um, there's like a lot of layers to it, but I think the one that's the most frustrating just for where I'm at in my life right now, and I think where we're at as like an internet culture, the way things are on the internet is very bad at the very. moment. Um, and it, it's just very frustrating to see people who don't care at all about the team have such strong opinions about the team. Like if you asked a hater of the women's national team, of which there are many, um, how many minutes Rapino played, I think they would think that she played the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. They, they'd say she scored uh, own goals. She yeah. scored all the goals against yeah. the USA. She's, uh, she's just public enemy number one when it comes yeah. to this team. And then people take whatever they think about her and just assume it about the entire team. Um, and it's all icky and frustrating and just infuriating, honestly, to have to deal with it's just not something you have to deal with when discussing other sports where you have to take into account or even try to ignore this loud faction that does not care at all, but cares so much and so deeply in such a broken way. Right. And the things, the points that they're trying to make, like even, oh, they didn't sing the national anthem, okay. like some of them. Can we talk about that? Because yeah. the fact that the goalpost has moved, which we always knew it would, which it was like, first you have to stand for the anthem, can't kneel. Then that happened, and it was like, well, now they're not singing it. Uh, I want to see their mouths moving. It's like, okay, then if they sing it, they're going to be like, well, they weren't on key. Right. And if you were a true patriot, you'd be on key. Do Americans sing the national anthem? No. That's what I thought. It's no. The it's people you put, put your hand over your heart, yeah. and you like think. Right. Because I will say, as I noticed in something we'll talk about later, but in Hard Knocks that I watched the first episode where DeMarcus Ware sang the national anthem, which was odd. 
Uh, I noticed a lot of guys not singing it. And, and I didn't see... They hate, Julie, that's because they hate their country. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. because they hate their country. That was my biggest so. takeaway from Hard Knocks. Was and the it fact makes it hard to root for them, if yeah, I can. I'd say that, if you I know, the, the Jets, and especially Aaron Rodgers, I think he had his, you know, he had his hands down, of course. How dare. Not even over his heart. Disrespectful. Was not singing. Awful. Would you take a penalty kick? No. No, I would not. If Vladko Ananovsky slash the next coach that will be hired <laughs> by the time this else. podcast comes out. No, I'm not built for it. I was having this conversation with Midge. I was like, I would just panic. I'm not built to be like, it's all on you and you're ready for this moment. I'm, my brain says it's all on you and you're going to embarrass yourself mm. in front of everybody. Uh, and then I think I would miss. So if he made me, I would do it. But I would say... To him, he'd if be this like, goes poorly, this on you, dude. Like, so. it, I'm going to do it, mm -hmm. but yeah, I'm, I may suck at it right. or it may randomly go in. Yeah. That's the other thing is like, it could just randomly go in. Yeah. I thought it was fascinating that the goalies have their, the keepers have like on their water bottle uh, written like what way everybody goes. I did not know that. Yeah. Fascinating. Which I think is why Sophia tried to go the, I think she went to the right yeah. Right. And she normally goes to the left. And so I think that was her being like this girl. Knows Overthinking that I go to the left. Yeah, exactly. And that's then what I would a listener goes right down the middle, which you would wild. think like, but that's it's actually so brilliant because a, a goalkeeper is going to go one way or the other, go down the middle. Yeah. Brilliant. She was it's great. Like, I mean, she, absolutely yeah, great. those two beast. saves she made that actually were zero save, uh, was awesome. And then immediately sucked. It was a tough loss, Jules. Yeah. But you know what? We're, um, we're onward and upward. I felt bad. I was watching it at home in Toronto, and like my mom and her boyfriend came down after I'd been up for like 100 hours just sitting there, like shaking back and forth. Like, <laughs> oh my God. They're like, so what are you watching right now? Uh -huh. I'm like, because they're obviously like, don't know. They yeah. were like, Canada's out. I'm like, it's the US women's national team. And then they're watching, like, oh, that's. This is so unfortunate. And I was like, oh my God, like you said, you guys just don't get it. They're it's like, also so hard to be emotionally invested at five in the morning. Like it's a very hard time to be like giving. I don't know, shit. with the uh, right medication, you can be. That's all <laughs> I know and what I've learned from the panty. Um, okay, so we talked about some of the some of the people. Um, how does Megan Rapino make you feel? I love her. I love her. I think she's um brave in a way that I can't fathom. She is a lightning rod. Everybody has something to say about anything she says. There's, in a certain faction of people's minds, there's nothing she can do right. Everything yeah. she does can be criticized. And she doesn't um, whine about that, ever. Uh, and I do. When people tell me what they think about what I say, I'm like, well, here's what I think about you. And she's just like, it doesn't matter. The mission is more important. Like this, what I'm doing, she believes in herself and in, you know, her beliefs, which I guess makes sense. Yeah. Believing in your beliefs. But she's just, um, she's just a very strong person and also incredibly talented athletically. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm really bummed for her that as a person who's never missed a PK in her international career, and I, I think maybe has missed one at the club level yeah. in her whole career, uh, ended her World Cup on a missed PK. Like, I think obviously she laughed at that because yes. it's just like, what else are you going to do? It was so it was ironic. so crazy. That's like what, what happened. You're like, well, obviously it's not going my way. Like, this is just yeah. how weird. And I hate that for her. But I also feel like of all the people that it could have happened mm -hmm. to, I know it will be a, a growth moment yeah. for her. And it'll be something that she learns from in some way. Yeah, and then like how she could then help Sophia, who was clearly very distraught. And it's like, she could be like, hey, look. Yeah. Like I've made like a million. I missed, I can like help you. Because I, you know, she just feels like someone, if someone's gonna have shit happen to them, they can deal with it, it's Megan. Mm -hmm. um, how would you feel if like randomly one day you opened up your Twitter well and someone had screenshotted something from another account and it was like the former president <sighs> going after you? Uh, would you be like, oh. Truthing? He was tw truthing and then somebody retruthed it or whatever they yeah, say on someone, that stupid Yeah, someone website. retruthed it and oh he was like, God. Katie Nolan is a, uh, you know, woke, crazy lady, well, who's doing this and this, would you be like, wow, 
oh my lord or you'd be like wow this is like i can't believe i'm taking out space in his head it would be there's nothing but space um (laughs) it would be the only thing i think now that i'm saying this i feel like i'm speaking it into existence the only thing that could get me to log off (laughs) is like if that person were talking about me just knowing what comes with that it's like that day that week i'm off the internet like the closest I've come to that was when I pissed off Cowboys fans and like <laughs> that was tough. But I think if that person retruthed about me on the internet, uh, I would just be like, cool. So I, I'm just not gonna, I'm gonna uh, like log out of every social media that I have because it's like, there's no, there's a storm coming yeah. and you just kind of have to weather it and not let any of it get to you, which is hard when you're sensitive like me. Yeah, I think that's probably the right reaction to that. Mm -hmm. Although in a way it's kind of like, wow, well like I triggered you, so like I have power over you. Yeah, and that's one way to look at it. I just think the barrage of- Oh yeah, sorry. I'm a very online person. I would love to be a person who's like, does this for a living and isn't incredibly online. It sounds like the most freeing thing. Working with Regis in my first job, trying to explain explain Twitter to him, Regis Philbin, may he rest in peace. I know the kids have no idea who that is, but he's a legend. Explaining Twitter to him, I was like, okay, and then you click on this, and this is where you can see everything everyone's saying about you. Oh no. And he literally just said, why would I want to do that? And I was like, well, I don't know, because, well, I don't know. Yeah. Why do I do that? And he was just like, that doesn't, I like to go do it. And then I go home. I don't yeah. need to know. He's like, if people had a problem with something I said, they would call the station. I'm like, oh my God. Imagine for some reason, when I do anything, there's a group of people who've got to write an article about oh, it. Oh, I can't wait how many articles will be written about Katie I mean, Nolan. It's just like, I'm not that interesting. And their point of their articles is like, she's not that interesting. I'm like, <laughs> great, same, we agree. So you don't have to write this. So that all day people can tell me how much they don't care about me, which is clearly a lie, because here they are exactly. giving a shit. It's like the there. U.S. Women's National Team. Mm-hmm. I just like I just don't want them to like open any social media yeah i looked at especially like sophia smith and all these young ones i'm like don't please i looked at rapino's like last instagram post which was about like her relationship and their sick apartment um and it was all it was just all hate like like vitriol like very awful hate and like laughing at her and it was just like what is this that's what's it people what like, is this like happy like yeah america lost i'm a patriot like i saw i know you are America. friends with pablo torre and he had like that great tweet of just like the most american thing to do like what i can't remember like checks notes like is to like cheer against america yeah, it doesn't make sense but you know what here's the thing they're nonsensical they're just mad. Yeah. And they don't really know what they're mad at. That's it. And that's why it comes They'll out. always be mad at something. Mm-hmm. They just want to find like a reason to be mad. And I was trying to like tell this to people like, just don't even acknowledge their madness because- It's not about you. They think it's about you. It's not. Yeah. It's about them. So like, let them go through it. Um, okay. You know what I'm going to bring up? What? It. I am such a glutton for nostalgia. Uh-huh. And it has almost been 10 years oh, to no. the day. Oh, no. A week of 10 years. Oh, no. From when we launched. Oh, my God. Fox Force One. I have to go. I'm nauseous. <laughs> um, so when you look back. Oh, my God. 10 years ago. That was what, what's like your What's like your, your most vivid slash favorite or memory of just like, FS1. Honestly, the first thing I think of when oh, from that like launch day, because that was my first experience with any of that. I had been making videos on YouTube in my apartment by myself. And then all of a sudden this, I was like getting my makeup done. I remember looking at myself in the mirror and being like, who is that? I've never looked like this. She's very pretty. I don't know her. Um, but like, I remember we were sitting, they had that giant one Remember the giant oh, course, one? Yeah. And we all had to like sit around the one and like 
Yeah. Do various the one, one for fun, positions. Which then they swiftly got rid of. Got rid of. But we all remember it. Dude, and that's the biggest lesson I think I've learned through sports media is like everybody up front in the uh, pitch meeting and in the planning, the pre-planning and the pre-stages, they're like, we're going to be fun. We're going to be fun forward. And then it takes one week and then they go, we're abandoning fun. Yep. And it's actually, we have to be more about this. And then if you're the person who has hired specifically for the fun, you kind of look around and you're like, well, now, well, so what, is anyone going to tell me what I do? Right. Then, like, you've done a lot of different shows. You inspired me to do shows because I was in the, I've been put in many different boxes based on what I've been, and there's just a, okay, I'll put you here now, I'll put you in this one, and I was in the sideline reporter box. Um, I and, suck at that, and I hate it. Did you like it? Um, I like the aspects it. of it. I got really frustrated with it by the end when I was at ESPN and I was like, I can't do this anymore. But then once I did it for TNT and I like figured it out of the best way to be mm. and it was like, it kind of clicked for me there and it, and it worked and then I got COVID. So obviously it was like, oh. Meh, you weren't supposed to do this. Um, but I was in the sideline reporter box and I, and I was like, I want to do hosting things and stuff. And they're like, but you can't. You're a sideline reporter. And I was like, no, but like I could do, I, I think I can do these things. And like, no. And then I, was, I remember being like so inspired by you. I was like, I want to, I need to show people that I can, I'm more than just like one yeah. dimension, which is like wild. Like people can do more than one thing. Yeah. What? It's easier for them though to go like, I know what that is. That's I know it. what that is. I know what that is. And they is. don't know what you are. Yeah, I don't know what I am. So that <laughs> makes it very, very difficult when you have to be out there advocating for yourself and demanding for Katie, what you deserve. You need, you need to know who you are because people will put me into like, oh, so kind of like Katie Nolan Which stuff. makes me want to flip a table. <laughs> uh, just where I'm at professionally to know that in interviews, and I've heard this from other people too, that they're like, we're looking for a Katie Nolan type. I'm like, well, guess who you could call? You could call Katie Nolan. She might be interested in hearing what it is. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, I'm not. Well, I'm. I like the interview side of stuff. I definitely the bits and all that is like very beyond my realm of. I I like thinking of them and doing them yeah. when other people are involved. When I'm just doing them, I'm like, it's hard. It's very I hard. Can't. You have to be a specific kind of crazy to look at a camera and like try to make people that aren't here laugh. It's it's it, hard. We we did cold opens at Fubo for Call It a Night. They all failed pretty much. Um had done stand up before. Great experience. Never want to do it again. Glad I did it. Glad I'm not doing it anymore. Um but for you, you've done like all these other different things with it. You've done all these different shows. Do you want to do another show? Yeah. I don't know that I've admitted that to myself until just now, but yeah, I do. I think that like it's tough because we said this at the beginning, like we've, we've worked at all these different networks. And I feel like for me, the main arc of my career was like, I did garbage time at Fox and then I did basically garbage also, it's time. Also no filter. Yeah. Oh, the internet show. Absolutely. Don't, don't forget that. But like then I did, I went to ESPN and I tried to do like, okay, you brought me here. You liked what I made, which was garbage time. So we're going to make a garbage time here. Right. And it was kind of like, well, no, we were going to have you host like sports center on Snapchat. And I was like, well, yeah, but that takes 15 minutes. Yeah. And then like, then what? Because looking at my paycheck, clearly there's got to be something else you want me to Cha -ching, do. Cha-ching, which is very good. And I'm Great, very happy. Awesome, super. And mostly for that, it was like, you don't want to be a woman who takes less because you don't need more. And then you're actually setting the bar low for any women that come behind Agreed. you. Agreed. It's good for us. Right. And then, and so, you know, I'm like, well, there must be more. And there, it, it, there wasn't until like we kind of, pushed for there to be more and then they were like well we have ESPN plus and you can put a show on there but you can't share any of it on the internet because it has to be behind a paywall so I was like oh. well that's kind of a handcuff and so like we just made the show and the people that helped us make it were all fantastic but the the person in charge of us changed like every few weeks and so I never oh. had anybody who was like going up the chain and being like this is what we're making and so it just sort of didn't stay and there was a point where they canceled it and I went into the office of somebody important and I was like you can't cancel it and then out of that meeting they put it on tv so I didn't really understand how it worked there I, <laughs> I love that how decisions They're like, were made okay well you pushed back a bit and we're gonna give you it was your weird TV but I loved show. it and it was great but it didn't 
it didn't work. It didn't I happen. Thought it was, I thought it, it was did, But it didn't happen. It didn't like pop off. It didn't get supported by the network. That's it. And so now I'm in a situation where I'm like, do I want to host another show? Am I insane? Is it the definition of insanity if I keep saying I think a comedy sports show can work? Because before I did Garbage Time, I researched sports comedy shows because it had been a, a myth or whatever, like a longstanding story we tell ourselves that like sports and comedy shows do not work for whatever reason. Like Norm McDonald's comedy. Like if Norm McDonald can't do it, who do I think I am that I can do it? Oh, you make a fair point. But every time I come back to it, I'm like, I would watch it. Yeah. And I like sports. So if I exist, one thing I've learned in my life is nobody's that unique. If I exist, there's a million of me out there that are like looking for something. Maybe they don't even know what they're looking for. But like the best thing about Garbage Time was I would hear from people that were like, what the hell is this? And then three weeks later, they were like, I love this. Yeah. This is so cool. It's different. Like, a lot of stuff on not just sports TV, now at this point TV, looks the same. Yeah. You turn it on, it looks the same. It's like this person and this person and they're arguing and there's a lower third and there's yes. a package and then when the package comes up, there's music bed underneath Okay, you don't it, have to come after our like, show here. Every, you know? It's everything. Everything is the same. <laughs> but it's... This show, Garbage Time was different and I feel like... I don't know. I think deep in my heart, I still believe that like there is room for that. Definitely. How to pull it off, I'm still working on. Um, but I, I do still think that like, because if I'm not a host of a show, then then what am I? Because I really don't know. The thing about being a host is like you get the versatility of like it can go wherever you want it to go. And, and my kind of, like you were saying about Pokemon cards, my thing has kind of been like, okay, let me get good at doing Man on the Street. Let right. me get good at doing uh, monologues that I was writing a lot of. Like, let me get good at writing. Let me get good at um, interviews. And like, my whole career has been like, let me just gather the skills. Right. And I think now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I think I have a bunch. Yes. Now let me use them. But it's very difficult going into like, interviews with people that are hiring for things. I have a lot of people that are like, so what do you wanna do? And I'm like, a show. What would be advice you would give someone trying to start their own show? I would say the people around you that are helping you make a thing are very important. Um, making sure that they feel invested in the product that you're making while mm. also understanding that their investment will not be the same as your investment. So like as the host, it's easy to be like, come on guys, what, you gotta care. And it's like, well, they're not, sitting there with their face on it. Right. But there are, that's not the only way to make somebody care. So like, I think I have always struggled with delegating things. I'm a very like, I'll do it. I got it. I'll do it. Yes. I got it. And throughout <laughs> my career have tried to learn, like, let it go. Trust this person because trusting them and then letting them get a win will help them feel motivated. Cause I right. always felt like, well, nobody wants to do any work, so I'll do the work. Like yeah. I'm doing you a favor by doing your job for you. And then quickly learned that like, no, you're making people feel like you don't think they're useful mm -hmm. and they can't help you. And that's what they're here to do. So let them help you instead of feeling like you have to do everything all the right. time. But or I came from YouTube where I literally had to do, do everything. everything. Or the let them do it and have them fail. And Which then, is very hard. And then be hard. like, oops. You know, you did this thing and you up, but you hopefully have learned from this. Mm -hmm. um, I obviously like wanted to ask you a whole lot uh, more, but wait, we you have to go in a second. But I have uh, because I'm I'm the producer, the writer, the guest booker on this show, and oh. the least of things, the host. I find whenever I get to an interview, I am the least prepared for the actual interview part of it because I've done everything else. But this is my this is my segment. It's instead of drinking a fish bowl, mm -hmm. which I would have done on my last show, mm -hmm. it's just um, off air random questions. Okay. Okay. So I'm gonna give you. Um, yeah, you, you can pick, but you can't look, and then you answer it, and then you answer it. And okay, I guess good, I was like I was gonna moment. change it, but then I I didn't. Um, so and read it, yes, please. Ooh, what's your pump up song to remind yourself you're a badass? It changes throughout my life. Um, right now, it's Renaissance. It's the entire album, oh, Beyonce's entire album, Renaissance. So good. Um, it is me trying to convince myself that I'm a badass more than reminding myself. And also, she's a very different kind of badass than me. Um, but it is fun to like 
embody that thought of like I'm that girl and that whole album is is that and she rules and it rules yes Beyonce's um, album so right now that's my life okay I'm gonna check that one out I always go to Gwen Stefani's it's my life because I'm just like when I was <laughs> negotiating my con- if I'm negotiating a contract it's bitch better have my money oh. that is I've specifically remember getting off of a subway and walking down the street multiple times it with that just blasting in my you should also ears. listen to what you waiting for by Gwen Stefani just not just okay because it's it it'll you'll get some of the lyrics in there. Okay. okay. Give me another one. Okay. Because this fishbowl of truth. <laughs> this is I what's called. I've won or t- Okay, here we go. What's the worst part about being from Boston? Yes. Uh, how much got- everybody else has something to say about it. That's the worst part. Mm-hmm. Is that everybody's like, uh, people from Boston are this. Like that's the only bad part. So Everything else about it rules because we rule. So it feels like bad, like you feel Kind of like I rarely sad. feel bad. No, I'm not really ever bad or sad. Right now, it's probably like sports. We're in a lull. We're going to be in a lull for a minute. Yeah. Um, but look, I I have seen this coming. I have been prepared for this in the sense that like no one can be as incredibly great and dominant across multiple sports like we've been for that long. Right. Eventually, you're going to have to like take a step back and reassess and come back and be great again. And when that happens, when Boston is winning at sports, it's the greatest uh City yeah, maybe I think from your vantage point that would be mm-hmm. Boston the, rules. The, it I, rules. It's like a, ta- sure. a small town that is a city. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I can understand mm-hmm. why not being from there yeah. would suck. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the U.S. Women's National Team. You can't win forever. Take a step back. Yeah, evolve. What's, you're just trying to hurt me. I think at this point, um, you're just trying to bring up things that. Listen, I live in America too. Okay. Yeah. I am For now. a permanent resident. Go back and. <laughs> Thank Uh, you for having me. It was really fun. (laughs) Thanks, Kitty. Okay. I love you. I love you so much. I love you too. Bye. Well, that's it for this edition of Off Air on Bet Rivers. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share so that I can buy my mom a birthday present this year. This is Julie Stewart Binks, and I'll see you next time when the red light is off.